Hello fellow Victorians, it's good to see you all again. I just received an advertisement in my mailbox from the Victorian government about Victoria's big build, the Eastern Suburbs edition. The state government is spending a huge amount of money on this upgrade to road and rail transportation throughout Melbourne. For example, we're told on their website that $23 billion is going to be spent on upgrades in the South East alone as part of the big build. The first thing to consider is, what will the benefits be? Certainly there are a lot of good things planned. The removal of level crossings should speed up vehicle traffic. The rail loop and connecting the Doncaster Freeway to the Northern Ring Road should also ease congestion on some major roads. One possible criticism may be that there appears to be little integration of road and rail networks. This certainly appears to be the case in the eastern suburbs. From what I can tell, upgrades to both networks are taking place in isolation to each other. The government claims one benefit is to get cars off-road and get people into trains. You would think that if they really wanted to do that, car parks would be provided where freeways and rail lines meet so people could transfer from their cars to trains instead of driving further into the city. The Doncaster Park and Ride shows that this works and is successful at getting people out of their cars and onto buses. From what I can see, not much thought has been given to this in the big build, at least in the eastern suburbs. Next, let's look at why this is happening. Why spend this huge amount of money on infrastructure when the state, according to some reports, is almost bankrupt? First, where is the money coming from to finance all this? Who is funding these many billions of dollars? You may recall a while back the Andrews state government tried to sign up to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. From what I can tell, this was done to get funding from China for projects like this. However, it was stopped by the federal government. If it went ahead, Victoria might have become debt-trapped, just like countries in Southeast Asia are finding themselves right now. As a country is debt-trapped by China, China would then make large inroads if Victoria was not able to repay the huge loans. It was fortunate for us Victorians the federal government stopped that. So the question remains, who is financing all this now? Next, there will be benefits to Melbourne. As people in management know, oftentimes things are done for more than one reason. There is a reason that's used to sell the idea to people. And there are other benefits, possibly to the manager or leader, which are not mentioned. It's left to us to figure out what these might be. Transportation would be improved. More people will use public transport, and we're told this will reduce carbon emissions. So we all agree with it and say it's a good thing. But what might the other unspoken benefits be? The construction industry will certainly benefit. It will mean large and long-term government projects, which will bring in large revenue streams to their organisations. It will also benefit construction workers. They will have job security, work for years to come, and good wages to go with it. So who are the companies and who are the construction workers? We need to see who gets the contracts. But we do know for sure right now that construction workers form a large part of the ALP supporter base. There may be a good reason why the big build is being promoted right now. This is an election year for the Andrews government. Daniel Andrews made a lot of enemies because of his heavy-handed treatment of people during COVID-19, especially with construction workers, who we saw protesting outside their union headquarters about compulsory vaccinations. These people were called Nazis by ALP leadership just because they didn't want to be vaccinated. Please see video one in the description below. It appears the Andrews government is spending billions of our dollars right now to smooth over his heavy-handed actions and to win people back that he treated badly. Basically, he's buying his supporter base back and buying the next election with our money. This is not the first time this has happened. He did a similar thing to win the 2014 state election. Then he had his red shirts work dishonestly using government money, our money, to win or buy an additional 400,000 votes to win the 2014 election. Daniel Andrews is a numbers man, and he knew he was going to lose the 2014 election. And this was the criminal act he came up with to buy votes and win that election. This big build, as he calls it, besides improving transport in Melbourne, is also a transaction with a large number of his voter base. Basically, he's saying if you vote for him, your construction jobs and your income for the next many years are secure. Again, we need to ask, who is financing all this? As I said before, we've been told the state is almost bankrupt, and the Andrews government is not known for transparency nor for controlling project costs. 
I was speaking to someone recently who works in a consultancy firm contracted by the state government to promote the big build. He was under the impression that the removal of railway level crossings was proceeding on time and under budget. However, I recall that in the Victorian Parliament, many were critical of the government's accounting procedures and claimed that the project costs were just not being recorded properly. Will the Andrews government record the finances correctly? Or will we get a big surprise when they're thrown out of government and we finally get to see the truth of what happened? So will the state be plunged into further debt for decades to come? The Andrews government doesn't care. They appear only interested in putting money into the pockets of their supporter base to get re-elected. They care little about the future of Victoria and the problems they pass on to later generations. Never, to my knowledge, has the ALP paid down the debt of the state. It was only the Kennett government that did so. They paid down the Victorian debt and had millions in the bank when they lost power to the ALP. Within a week or so, the ALP had spent that money saved up by the Kennett government and we were in the red again, with big ALP spending probably to reward their voter base. It will only be when these dishonest cheats are thrown out of power we will see the true state of Victoria's indebtedness, and from what I can tell now, it won't be pretty.